you see the difference between the two words, and we're going to concentrate on the word ecclesia, the gathering. Okay, and if you remember, the gathering doesn't have, doesn't have to happen in a temple. If you go to the book of Acts, they used to meet where? At homes, right? In houses, in homes. Last Wednesday night, I had a meeting in my house, and the Spanish people came in there. And we studied the Bible. We prayed together, right? We have fellowship well until the hours of the night. We were the church in my house last Wednesday night. Okay, we were a gathering of people getting together for a common purpose. Now, I understand because the definition is like that, I want to make it crystal, crystal clear for you. The church is not, this morning, the church is not the building or the structure. Okay, the church is not a philosophy or our denomination. Okay, you don't really go to a Baptist church. Okay, you gather with your people and your denomination is Baptist, but in reality, your church is not the denomination. The church is not our traditions either. And the church is not the music we play. We, we hear the term contemporary church, right? It's not the music we play. It's not the programs we have. The church is you and me. The ecclesia, la iglesia. The gathering of the people. We are the called out ones. Okay? Now that's a very general definition and I understand that. And because of the definition, you can really have any kind of church. Right? If you just call a group of people together for any reason, we're having church, you can say. And so I got interested this week and you know, nowadays we Google everything. I don't know about you, but I do. So I had to do it. I went into Google and put the church off in his search. Wow, you wouldn't believe what came up. I just picked a few. I just picked a few. First one, of course, the church of Google. <laughs> there is the church of Google. The second one is even more interesting, church of the flying spaghetti monster. Now, what do you do to belong? I don't know. I like this one, the church of the subgenius. Now, if it was the church of the genius, I couldn't belong, but at least this one I could, right? Then we have the church of Satan. We've heard of that one. The church of all worlds. I like this next one. The church of reality. Their motto is, if it's real, we believe it. <laughs> I love that one. The church of reality. Now the next one I chose to put it on the list because I was trying to convince all week for my wife to become a member. But it didn't work. It's called the church of stop shopping. <laughs> Then I found the church of nobody. Now, how can, you, how can you have a church of nobody when a church means a gathering of people? When you have somebody, you no longer have the church of nobody. I don't understand that one. <laughs> and the last one is the church of non-believers. But that one, I also have a, a, a thing with it because if, if you, to become a member of the church of non-believers, you got to believe in the church of non-believers. But now you believe, so you're not a non-believer anymore, so you can't be a member of the church anymore. Right? I don't know. But anyways, let's get serious here. So I'm glad. I'm glad that the creed doesn't say, I believe in the church. That's not what the creed says, right? He specifies the church. He says, I believe in the holy Catholic church. <laughs> 